Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to part 8 of the Finance with Python tutorial series. In the last video, we basically, we've been pulling all these stocks, we saved them all, all the pricing data. In the last tutorial, we actually uh, compiled them all into one large data frame and we saved that data frame as a CSV file. Now what we're going to do is we're going to work with that data and our attempt is to just see, can we at least initially find any sort of relationship with this data set. Now a couple things to note. One is a lot of this data has missing values. Another is this is the relationship over the course of over 15 years. So it's 16 years basically of relationships, actually really like 17 years since it's from the beginning of 2000 all the way to the end of 2016. So chances are a lot of these companies have changed over time. So this is just meant to be a super simple example, but really you probably want to look deeper into specific time periods along the way rather than holistically like we're about to. With that, let's get into it. So what we're going to say is uh, we're going to call this define visualize data. DF is going to be pd.read CSV and that CSV is going to be what we just saved. <clears throat> Perfect. So from here, we could do something as simple as um, df if we just wanted to look at apple, for example. df apple.ply, plt.show, and then we could actually call this function to run. Uh, plt not defined. So apparently we have to import it and we haven't. No, we haven't. Wow. Okay, so we'll do that first. So let's go ahead and uh, import matplotlib.py plot as plt. Uh, from matplotlib we're going to import style and then we're also going to style.use ggplot. We'll make more money if our graphs look good. Great. So here's our graph for Apple and it's just, you know, we're able to access our data. Cool. So, uh, but that's not why we combined all of our data, not so that we could plot individual graphs, but instead so we could actually compare them. So I'm going to go ahead and just comment the, these lines out here. Alt three, if I haven't said that yet. Now we're going to say is df core equals df dot core. And what we've just done is something that I've honestly seen paid services do. So, um, if, if you need some side capital or whatever, make a web, um, a web app out of this and, um, you're welcome. So this will just create a correlation table of our data frame. So of all the columns in our data frame, it's going to look at all of the information, compare the relationships between all of them, and, and generate the correlation values, um, and like calculate correlation, <laughs> which is just incredible because it's going to do it really fast too, which is really cool. But uh, anyway, that's a good amount of data, and that would, that would normally be a lot of work for us to write that out. So now what we're going to do is we've got that, and we can actually do df or head just to kind of see what we're dealing with at this point. I take a second. Here we go. So as you can see, of course, you know, the companies specifically are correlated to themselves, but then we get all the other correlation numbers from all of the companies. I don't see anything. Most of these are pretty positive, but you can see here's some negative correlations here. Obviously AES is fairly weakly correlated at least to these first few companies, but I'll go ahead and say that, that trend probably will continue. Then you've got over here some companies that are like, you know, weakly positive correlated, and then XRX here is like almost neutral. Um, so depending on what kind of an investor you are, you could kind of look at these. So if you're looking at something that's going to be like mean reversion or something like that, you would get two companies that are highly correlated. And once one of them starts to deviate, you can invest in one and short the other one. And then eventually they come back together. Um, or some that are like negatively correlated if they're both going in one direction again invest in one short the other uh, and then you've got other situations like uh, like neutrally correlated like if you're just truly an investor and you want to be properly diversified you should invest in non-correlation correlated stocks so anyways um, that's a correlation data but we're going to take it a step further and we're going to visualize it so now what we're going to do is we're going to first say data is equal to df underscore core dot values. So again, that just gets the inner values of our data frame. So it's not going to give us the index and the headers. It's just going to give us that inside. It's a NumPy array of the columns and rows. So we've got the inner data now. And then we're going to define specify our figure, which will be plt dot 
configure. And now what we're going to do is define our axes. So we'll say ax equals fig.add underscore subplot. We're just going to have one subplot, so I'm not going to do the whole subplot to grid stuff. Just for the record, this means it's a one by one, and it's plot number one. You can also do this, which I think makes a little more sense. It's kind of silly. Um, I think it's legacy that this worked, but this makes more sense. It's per, they're like parameters. So, well, I guess I'll leave it like that for now. Uh, now what we're going to do is define the heat map. So heat map equals a x dot p color, which is going to allow us to just kind of like plot some colors. Now we're going to pass data here, and then for our c map, we're going to say plt dot cm, and this is going to be cm dot r d y l g n. Note the caps: capital R O lowercase d, capital Y yell. So it's red, yellow, green. So this C map is a range from red to yellow is neutral to green is positive. So it's going to be a heat map of those. Now we're going to say fig.colorbar heat map. This will just kind of give us like a legend. It's just going to be a color bar that kind of depicts our ranges. Now we're going to actually set up the graph. So we're going to say ax.setx ticks. And these will be, I don't think we have NumPy. I'll have to get those in a second. Anyway, a range data dot shape one uh, then it'll be plus 0 0.5 I will explain this uno momento and then we're gonna do the exact same thing one more time for y and actually let's see data shape no what this be fine um, Okay, so let me check to see if we've got NumPy, which we do not. Import NumPy is NP. Coming back down. So what we're doing here is we're just like setting our ticks. So in this case, we want, um, we're going to take, sorry, data shape x to 0x. I think we're pretty sure we actually want to flip these. It won't actually matter because our data shape should be identical, but I'm pretty sure those should be flipped. Someone can feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Anyway, um, like I said, it won't matter in this exact example, but we want to be able to write a heat map that could be used in other scenarios. Anyway, uh, first now what we've done here basically is it's just setting these little ticks because we're basically building this graph. Like the previous graphs that we've made, we've been able to just kind of throw data at it and it knows what to do. But in the case of a heat map, there is no official heat map. So this is how we do it. So first we take the colors and they're just going to plot these colors and it's going to be on a grid. But then we want to have like little ticks that we can mark and say, okay, which, you know, where are the companies like lined up? But then also we're going to add our company labels as well. So what we're doing here is we're just arranging ticks at every kind of half mark. So at not the full one, but at like 1.5, there will be a tick. And then at 2.5, there will be a tick mark. Just And this is literally just like a tick mark. It'll make more sense, I think, when we see it. Now we're going to do ax.invert y axes. And we're going to do this just because there's always going to be a little bit of a gap at the top of a matplotlib graph. And in most cases, that makes sense. But in this case, it does not. Then we're going to say ax x axis dot tick underscore top again this will move the x axis ticks from being normally at the bottom of a chart it just puts them on top because in the case of this it's, it's meant to be more like a table so it makes more sense um, for the x axis to be depicted on top and the y axis to depict deep be depicted on the side yet not have some random gap at the top so we're just kind of doing that to compensate for what otherwise are pretty good defaults for matplotlib but in this case it doesn't make any sense now column underscore labels will be df um, df underscore core <coughs> core columns and then we're going to have our uh, row labels those will be uh, df core.index now again in this case these should be identical because this is a pure correlation table and it's just like all the stocks compared to each other. So both of these lists ought to be identical. That's why data.shape did not matter. It should be, you know, like 505 by 505. So it, it shouldn't matter here, but this makes 0th should be the X and then the Y. 
I'm not going to spend too much time thinking on this because it might actually be, that might not actually be the case because it might be width height and then the other one height width. Anyway, sorry. So uh, the next thing, so we've got column labels, row labels. Now we're ready. We're going to say ax dot set underscore x tick labels. We're going to call oops. We're going to call those um, column labels. Ax dot set y tick labels. We're going to call those the row labels. Uh, by default, x labels will be like horizontal. We want them to actually be vertical so they're not so squished up. We're all, it's already going to be way too squished, but this should help. So we're going to say uh, plt dot x ticks uh, rotation equals 90. So it's going to be a 90 degree rotation. Heat map dot set c limb. Uh, negative one to one. So what this is going to do is this, this is it. It's basically the limit of these colors of this basically this heat map. It's just the color limit. So negative one is the maximum, and then positive one is or I'm sorry, negative one is the minimum, and then positive one is the maximum. So in many cases, like in this one, we've got enough data to where we probably actually do have data that's dispersed between negative one and positive one, but we definitely will have positive ones, but I don't think we have any perfect negative correlations. That would be really weird. So, um, but in reality, this is the scale that we want. We actually want this full scale, but sometimes you'll want a relative scale. But yeah, in this case you don't. But if you were doing like covariance, you you wouldn't bound the scale. You, you just simply wouldn't have this. You would let covariance run its course. So anyway, uh, PLT dot tight layout. This just kind of clean things up a little bit, hopefully, because this is already going to be a pretty messy graph. And then PLT dot show. And then we're ready to run this. So let's go ahead and copy. And this might take a while. <laughs> um, oh, we already call it. Um, I'm trying to think here. Read CSV. You you could maybe shorten the columns here, or maybe if you already had shortened when we pulled from Yahoo. I don't know. This is going to make a huge graph. I'm just warning you. So if you're on like a netbook or something like that, this is going to be slow. Mostly the graph itself. When you pull up the graph, it's going to make a huge graph. So long as we don't have an error. Wait for it. Uh, column labels. That doesn't look typoed. We must have typoed something else. Let's see. Column labels. So sure enough, we typoed the original labels. All right, let's try again. That took a while to get to that error. It's kind of frustrating. Wait for it. Oh, it looks like it came up. Let's see. Here we go. Beautiful. Yeah, so as you can see, that's a huge chart. All the data is there. It's just you can't see it very well. Let's see if I can make it at least pretty big for the for the video. So yeah, as you can see, it's even it's lagging on my computer, and I've got a pretty decent this is running on your CPU. So that's why it's pretty slow. But anyways, you can click on the zoom and like this little magnifying glass. That'll let you zoom in. So like let's just zoom in to like here. You can pick wherever you want, but I'm gonna zoom into here. So here you can see, okay, we've now we've got a pretty strong kind of representation. So we can see like NWSA, which is News Corp, I think, is negatively correlated pretty strongly and like when we were fully zoomed out. So if you want to go back to the previous view, you can hit this back arrow. Also, you can go, you can click the home to go back home, but I'll hit the back arrow. What we zoomed into is like this, you can kind of see it when you're zoomed out. There's like a strong line here and there's one here. It's the same company actually. Um, so anyway, we zoomed into that spot. Uh, so you can see it's very negative pretty much all the way through. And so is this line as well. Again, it's the same exact company where they intersect. It's the same. Anyway, uh, see like NWSA and then NWSA. Anyway, so we can see like we've got a lot of re uh, correlation here. Most of this table we can tell when we look at the home is predominantly green, but we have a few very strong negative correlations. Now, of course, you want to be careful. Some of the negative correlations might be companies that like legit just go out of business or something. <laughs> so you do want to be careful about those companies. Um, but then it's I my thing is like I like to, you know, look at the, the totally just like neutral companies that are just yellow, like like MS, it, Morgan Stanley, I think is pretty neutral to everybody, which is kind of strange because that's a bank. Um, I wish we, I don't know if we'll find Bank of America or something on here. 
or JP Morgan. Let's see. B. Maybe Bank of America. Surely Bank of America is in the S&P 500. I'm just not seeing it. This would be B. Oh, here it is. Bank, Bank of America is. Wow. It's, at least on this so far list. Let's scroll. See if we can control this. <laughs> So Bank of America is also relatively either neutral or even negative with a lot of companies. That's interesting. I never knew banks to be pretty neutrally correlated, but apparently I'm lost now. We've dragged so much, but yeah, it's still neutral. Interesting. Yeah, cool. Okay, so so there's definitely relationships here. We could go, we could play with just looking on this graph all day, and I'm sure if you want to do that, you can just do that yourself. Uh, you don't need to do that with me. So. What we're going to do now is, since we see that there are definitely some relationships here, the question is, can we code something in our on our computer that will just, you know, find sort of relationships like these? Obviously, correlation is just one possible relationship. So what we're going to do is we're going to dive into creating features and labels and see if we can't apply some machine learning to this to see if we can't at least get a slight edge. So that's what we're going to be working on in the next few tutorials, of turning this into features and labels and feeding it through machine learning classifier to see if we can figure out anything interesting. So that's what you guys have to look forward to. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next tutorial.